All right, my guest tonight here in Los Angeles, associate editor for Destructoid.com, Chad Conselmo joins us. And from San Francisco, editor of Wired's Game Life blog, Chris Kohler. Welcome to The Loop, everybody. Let's get it going. This has been the talk of the Internet the past few days. Now, last year, they announced E3 was being sort of downsized or getting back to its roots, if you will. The E4 All Expo then became the savior for the fans and for the video game media. Uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on the Expo? I mean, did it, did it live up to the hype? I think if, um, if, if they were trying to create something that was a new E3, maybe they were a little misguided insofar as E3 went down because all of the major hardware makers and EA all pulled out of E3 and didn't want to do it anymore. Um, so if they were trying to create a, a fan show, maybe they should have gone more along the lines of something like a, a Comic-Con or a Penny Arcade Expo, which they really didn't do. It was just, again, another, another E3. It looked a lot like an E3, except for there were a lot less people there. Chad, would you agree with that? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree that it was definitely a lot more downsized than people expected, but, I mean, it was for the public, that's the point. I mean, I think a lot of people in the press are, are you know, focusing on these huge shows, and, and that's not who it was for, it was for the public. And a lot of these people have never been to any kind of expo before, and I think they had a great time. Yeah, you know, Chris, it, it seems like a lot, a lot of the negative feedback I'm hearing happens to be from bloggers and from journalists and from the media themselves, who, again, they're used to the Tokyo game shows, and they're used to hundreds of thousands of attendees. Is that part of the issue? Right. Well, the Tokyo Game Show is also a public show, and that's something where every major publisher except for Nintendo in Japan participates, and they bring down their famous designers, and they, and they do all kinds of crazy stuff, and both the public and the press are both really into it. Um, and, of course, you're hearing a lot of stuff from the press because the public, um, you know, by definition, doesn't actually have giant uh, websites and magazines where they can go and express their opinions about these kind of things. True, but I mean, they, don't, they, gamer, they also don't have inflated expectations because they never had had an event mm -hmm. like this before, so... Exactly. Well, they've got, also, Penny Ar they've got Penny Arcade Expo. You know, they, they have had events like this before. I kind of take issue with that, that idea that this was the first time the public has ever gotten their hands on games. I mean, at Penny Arcade Expo, uh, not to keep harping on this, but Sony was there and Microsoft was there, and they didn't participate in E4ALL. Yeah, Chad, um, and uh, and so, that's, but, that's an extremely valid point. So, Chad, what happened mm -hmm. with the Microsofts and the Sonys? Why did they decide to back out of this event? I think there was a lot of early bad press for this event, like especially after E3 was, you know, not taken very well after the E3s of the past. I think a lot of people freaked out thinking it was going to be a big bust, and then that's why they pulled out. But, I mean, TGS has been around forever, and PAX has been around forever, and it's like they know what they're doing, and they have huge shows, but e for all was the first year. I mean, you, ha you can't fault them for not having a show as big. And at the same time, they had huge things, like Smash Brothers was playable, which wasn't even playable at TGS or E3. And Metal Gear Solid was actually the first build of the, uh, the English demo. So it's like there was a lot of huge things there to focus on. So I think it's kind of unfair to give so much negative press to the whole event. Chris, what did you see there that you liked? There was a lot of interesting... There was a lot of interesting things to focus on. I mean, I absolutely agree. Like, you know, people loved playing Smash Brothers. People absolutely loved playing Metal Gear Solid 4. But outside of Nintendo's and Konami's booths, there wasn't that much to do. If you walked out there, you didn't really see a lot of people in the smaller booths. And, and, and it was a huge... I mean, they booked the South Hall of the L.A. Convention Center. And, um, I mean, almost like a third to half of it was pretty much empty. They really had to spread it out because yeah. it was just those two games. And you know what? You're paying $75. If you showed up on Saturday and wanted to go in, it was $75 a lot of money and you go in and you play Smash Brothers for like you know maybe you play play it five times stand in line five times you just played Smash Brothers for 10 minutes and you go and you play Metal Gear Solid for 15 minutes and a lot of people that I was talking to fans not journalists on the show mm -hmm. floor mm -hmm. were saying that well I'm not going to come back on Sunday because you know even though I've already paid for it there's nothing much for me to do right I've already I seen it I don't all, need to I mean, wait in line again no I agree I agree right. that the price I agree that the price was probably way too high, but that, again, it was the first time they've done this. They, they were assuming that the show was probably going to be a lot bigger than it was, and I, I yeah. think next year when they do this again, they're probably going to adjust the price to how many people come, and I think it will totally fix itself. And also, I think that you know, if more companies did get involved and I think didn't freak out to begin with, I think that the thing would have been a huge hit. And I just mm -hmm. think, I mean, you know, there are little, a couple of little factors that maybe made it not as great as it could have been, but... As a whole, I think it was a great first step. All right, well, let's move on to the final word, and we'll start with you, Chris. Next year, you got Comic-Con, you have the Penny Arcade, which obviously gamers uh -huh. love. You have their expo, and you have E4ALL. Uh, what mm -hmm. are you putting your money behind? What should the fans rally behind? And do you think more companies will show up to E4ALL? 
Well, I'll tell you, I mean, some developers that I spoke to said they're not going to go to E4ALL again. It was too expensive. They didn't get enough people coming to their booths. And E4ALL next year is scheduling their expo on the last weekend in August, which is when Penny Arcade Expo happens. And, I mean, now you're asking Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, whoever, to choose between one or the other. And I think if they have to, based on this year's performance, they would choose PAX. And it's going to put E4ALL in a very tough spot. All right, Chad, and very quickly, what do you think gamers are going to choose? Um, I think that they actually might choose PAX, unfortunately. I agree with the, the bad date change. But I just think that, you know... They, they need to just figure out some way of just making the show a little bit bigger, maybe combining an E3 with an E for All and making it more of like a TGS. Or and maybe book like a, a conference room at a Ramada or a Motel 6, <laughs> and that way you can absolutely <laughs> pack that sucker. That's true. If they, if they fill it, maybe you know, they'll deceive people into thinking it's bigger than it really is. All right, I want to thank my guests, Chad and Chris, for joining us. Thank you guys for keeping us in the loop. Really appreciate your time. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.